Hi there, I just wanted to take you through a couple of tips that I've uh, come to realize over the last couple of months about the best way to work on an iPad if you happen to be fairly deeply entrenched in the Google set of tools. Uh, and part of the problem comes from the fact that there's a lot of overlap. So for example, um, uh, if you look over here, you'll see we have Safari up in the top uh, left-hand corner there and Safari is a web browser. And when you go there, Safari is a great way to browse the web, a very capable web browser. But of course, uh, if you look down here, you've got Google Chrome, and Google Chrome is also a web browser, and it's also a very capable way of browsing the web. Um, you've got similar overlap between things like uh, there's a Gmail app there, and you can see you can go and read your, your email using the Gmail app. Or if you look over here, you see down the bottom right-hand corner there, there's a, an app there for mail, which I actually haven't set up yet, so you can see it's just completely blank. But that's the basic problem. You've got apps that do the same task. And of course, uh, let me just show you a, uh, an example of what I mean here. If I was to open this mail, for example, and so, so here's an email that has some links out to the internet. When I click on the link, it actually opens in Chrome, which is actually what I want. And I'll delve into that a little bit more in just a moment. But essentially, if you want to try and work productively with the Google tools on an iPad, what you need to set up is an ecosystem for the Google tools to talk to each other. So the Gmail app opens links in Chrome, for example. If you use the Apple tools to do a lot of this stuff, even though they're quite capable tools, they will not throw to the, um, to the Google tools by default. Now, before I do that, let me just say the first thing most users would want to do when they get their iPads is to click on Settings. And they would then go into one of the very first things you do is you'd set up your mail account. So let's just do that. So I'll go to mail contacts and calendars over here, click on the add new account button, and I have a couple of different options. Obviously, I'm setting a Google account, so I'll click on the word Google there and I'll type my account details. Okay, so I've filled in those details there, and when you click next, it will verify, and you'll see we get four little ticks should appear next to those four things just to say that everything's okay and here's the step that I think is important is when you get to this step if you're a hardcore Google Apps user I would recommend you actually turn off mail and actually we're not going to use Apple Mail at all for checking mail we're going to use the Gmail app um, however I would use contacts and I would use calendars and it's up to you whether you want to use notes or not hit the save button and they will add that Gmail account and you can see you've now got the Gmail account but importantly it's it's syncing with contacts and calendars and notes but not mail um, Now the important thing about that is when it's syncing to contacts and calendars it's actually pulling those contacts and calendars directly from the Google Cloud so the calendars for example are not being stored on the device they're actually being stored on the Google Cloud and so any changes you make to a calendar entry is being made in the cloud. That way it reflects automatically on your other devices. All right, so we've set that up. Let's just come out of settings. Okay. Now the reason we've deliberately excluded mail is because I would prefer to use Gmail. And here's why. You go in here and click on the little gear wheel here to look at the settings. And in the settings, you'll see down here it says Google Apps. And when you click on the Google Apps thing, this is where the magic happens. When you click on a link that goes to the internet, if this switch here is turned on at the top here for Chrome, it will automatically open the link in Chrome rather than Safari. And consequently, if you look down the list there, a link that goes to a Google Drive document will open in Google Drive, Maps will open in Maps, Google Plus will open in Google Plus, and YouTube will open in YouTube. So uh, what you'll end up with is linking into this app directly rather than being thrown directly into Safari and having to navigate things from there. So I've just showed you how that works in Gmail in the settings there, how you can set Gmail to refer to all these other apps. Let's go back to say Chrome. Same sort of thing, if I go into Chrome, click on the uh, little hamburger settings bar on the top there and go to settings, you'll see that Chrome also has an option here for Google Apps. And it can also default out to other apps. So with this, for example, if I was to be on a web page in Chrome and it had a link in the web page to, a, to an email address, so long as this option here for Gmail is turned on, that link will throw to the Gmail app and not to the mail.app. Um, same thing with the YouTube links. And an app experience on the iPad is always much preferable.